Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Pray First, a conversation we have Monday through Friday right here on the Pastor Doug page. It is great to be with you all on this Tuesday, December the 8th, 2020, and we're talking about 25 Messianic prophecies from the Old Testament that Jesus fulfilled. Jesus fulfilled over 400 prophecies of the Old Testament, but we are specifically focusing in on 25 in hopes that we can finish them before Christmas. But at the rate we're going, it's not looking good. Yesterday, we started on the very first one, and we didn't even get to the second verse. So I'm going to continue this conversation today because we're not just trying to uh, read the obvious, and we're not just trying to read the prophecies. We are trying to mine the truth with the axe, with the hatchet, with the hammer, beat the rock, and find uh, the jewels and the truth that is lodged in all of these prophecies, not just for historical purposes, but for today. Hit the hearts, hit the likes, go crazy on those. Those are for you, our first time guests. So that's our family telling you that we're glad that you were here. Hashtag live, hashtag recorded. And if you would not mind, uh, share this out on your pages. So I just want to say a shout out to Bob McNeese. What's going on, Bob and Lana and Mel and Robert and Dion and Laurie and Raymond? What's up, Raymond Duffy? Man, how is, um, how's it going out there in Maywood land? Mel, my friend Mel, how are you doing? And Tasha and Tracy and Julia and Brenda and Christine and Kimmy and Rebecca and Whitley and seven other people. That's literally what it says. Rodney and Amber and I just could go on and on. Uh, what's up, Kelly and Brandy and Ann and Laurie Brashier and Jeff England? Woo, man, there's 40 something, 50 of you alive. It's steadily going up. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Candy. And now we got to get into this. But let me just say this before I do. Happy birthday. Shout out to my boy, Philip Casarino. Happy birthday, my brother. It's good uh, to have you in our family at Cross Point and part of our team here and also here at Pray First. So let's jump right in. The Messiah uh, had 25 prophecies that we're talking about, the prophecy and the fulfillment of that prophecy. And we're starting in Genesis chapter 3, 15. If you missed yesterday, you better get on it. Genesis chapter 3, verse 15 says, this is God speaking to the serpent, the abolos, the snake in the Garden of Eden, after he has uh, deceived Eve and Adam into partaking of the fruit. He says, this is what will happen of you. I will put enmity, I will put bloodshed, war, tension, chaos between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. Everybody hashtag offspring. On yesterday, we really developed the idea of offspring. When you read those verses, you know this is a messianic prophecy. You immediately lean towards the offspring of Eve, which would eventually be the offspring of Mary, which would be the son of God. And we think, well, that's the enmity. That is, that, that's the warfare between, between God and his enemies. But it says more than that. It says, I'm going to put enmity between you, Lucifer, you snake, everybody hashtag snake, between your offspring and hers. What is the offspring of Diabolos? What is the offspring of of Lucifer. Now that's in the New International Version that it uses the term offspring. Let's read it in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15 from the New King James Version. Remembering that Jesus is the word of God. He is the offspring of God. He is the seed of God and he is the result in human flesh of the spermata of God and the womb of Mary bringing forth all God and all man. Unto us, a child has been born. That child belonged to Mary. Unto us, a son has been given. That son belonged to God. Jesus is the offspring, the unique, only begotten, all man, all God, son of God. 
but it refers to the offspring of Satan, the offspring of Lucifer. Listen to the word that is used here in the New King James Version. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed, small s, not capital. It is not referring to a proper noun. It's not referring to a name. Your offspring, Lucifer, is not a name. And her seed, capital S, which is a name, the name above every name. So they took the word offspring out and replaced it with seed, or they take the word seed out and replace it with offspring. Jesus is the word of God. I want you to remember the soils of Mark chapter 4, and the seed was spread on soil. The seed is the word of God. The soil is our hearts. But there's more than one seed. So the seed is always good. The seed always reproduces. The seed always does what it's intended to do. But the soils are different. And it can be different stages of your life. You're not necessarily bad soil. You're just in a bad stage. When you look at the four soils of Mark chapter 4, you will find people who are beginning in God people who are exploring God, people who are close to God, and people who are God-centered. Listen to me. What seed have you allowed to take root in your soil? What do you think the thorns grow out of that choke out the word of God? Where do those thorns come from? Where, where do the weeds come from that, that grow up and choke out the word of God? There's another seed Okay, so it says, I'm going to put enmity between the offspring of Lucifer, which is a lowercase s seed, and an uppercase s seed, the offspring of Satan and the offspring of God. And we know the offspring of God is Jesus Christ in the only begotten, but we also are the children of God. So it's very important that you listen to this very clearly. I'm going to put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed, and he shall bruise your heel. All right? The spermata of God always brings forth the righteousness of God, the seed of God, the word of God. The spermata of Lucifer, the spermata of Satan, the abolos, the roaring lion, the spirit of Antichrist, always brings death. Always. Genesis chapter 4, verse 4, we're going to see the fulfillment of the prophecy in Genesis 3.15. Galatians 4.4 4 says, But when the time had fully come, I want you to notice there is a germination to the word of God. What God said was true in Genesis... What God said was true, and it was accurate, but was for a pointed time. The seed was there. The seed was good. The seed had potential. The seed was going to perform what it had been spoken to perform. But several thousand years passes, and Galatians chapter 4 says, When the time had fully come, I want you to know that you have planted some seeds that are lying dormant, and they grow in different stages. But this is the caution I want to give you. Not only does the seed spermata word of God come at an appointed time, so do the seeds of Lucifer. So do the seeds of Diabolos. What seeds are lying dormant in your life since you have come to Christ? Do you think they will never sprout up? Wise people understand that yesterday... Come on, it's connected to today. And today will show up in tomorrow. It is the principle, it is the law of seed time and harvest. It, it, regardless what seeds you plant, they're going to come up. And so I'm going to talk to you about how to defeat those seeds of death and unrighteousness and the seeds you planted before you come to Christ or the seeds you're planting now that you need to take care and be careful what you're doing. Galatians 4, 4, but when the time had fully come, God sent his son born of a woman and born under the law. 
All right, John chapter 14, verse 6. We've got to hurry. Jesus answered. Okay, if the offspring of God is Jesus, listen to what Jesus, how he describes himself. Jesus answered, or the offspring of God, the seed of God, the word of God, the truth of God, the spermata of God. Jesus answered, I am the way, I am the truth. Everybody, hashtag, truth. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. He is the way to God. He's the only way to God. He is the truth of God. He is the seed, the spermata, the spoken word of God, and he is life. Inside the seed of God is life. No one comes to the Father. Okay, I want you to see that genealogy, that relationship again between the word and, and God. God is his Father. That's why Jesus is the offspring of God. That's why truth is is the offspring of God. That's why the direction is the offspring of God. That's why life is the offspring of God. What was, what was the enmity between? It was between death and life. It was between chaos and the way. It was between lies and truth. Jesus is saying, I am the, I am the truth. I am the way. I am the life. There's no other way to get to my father than to walk in the way, live in the truth, and accept eternal life. But that's one seed. John chapter 8, verse 31, Jesus is speaking to Jews who were walking around with him. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching, Jesus is speaking to them. If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So the word of God, the spermata of God, the seed of God, the offspring of God is the truth. And the truth will set you free because Jesus says, I am the truth. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Then they answered him and said to Jesus, we are Abraham's offspring. We are Abraham's descendants. We're of the seeds of Abraham. And have never been slaves to anyone. I want you to recognize how utterly, galactically, impossibly, immeasurably stupid that statement is. These are New Testament Jews speaking to Jesus about their offspring-ism, their, 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 their heritage in Abraham, and they've never been in bondage to anyone. They've been in bondage to everyone. They've been in bondage to the Amorites, the Malachites, the Sadducees, the Hittites, the Menelites, the Lebelites, and the Camelites, and the, every kind of light. They've been in bondage to uh, Nebuchadnezzar. They had been in bondage to Babylon. They had been in bondage to Egypt 400 plus years, and they were so blind that they did not realize that they were in bondage to anyone. They looked at Jesus the Messiah, speaker of the truth, and began to speak lies. And they didn't even know they were speaking lies. We've never been in bondage to anyone. Have you lost your ever-loving mind? You've been in bondage to every nation, every tribe, every group, every pagan and hostile king in the history of mankind, and you don't even know you're in, in bondage. You're speaking lies. And listen to how Jesus responds to their blindness and to their lying. Jesus replied, very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now, a slave has no permanent place in the family. We're back to offspring. We're back to spermatozoa. We're back, we're back to these very core roots. He says, no slave has a permanent place in the family or in the truth or in the way or in the life. No one comes to God who is a slave to sin, but the son belongs to it forever. But a son, not capital S son, but you and I, the sons and daughters of God, we who are part of the family of God, walkers in the way, livers in the truth, and recipients of eternal life, we're there forever. So it is. The Son sets you free. You will be free indeed. I know that you're Abraham's descendants, and you're looking for a way to kill me because you have no room for my word. What did Mary say to the angel? Let it be done unto me according to your word, according to your spermata, according to your seed. Jesus says to these descendants of Abraham, you're so full of 
the spawn or the seeds or the spermata of Lucifer, you have no room for my word. So when I reach out to offer you freedom, you can't recognize truth from lies. You are blind. You have no room for my word. Verse 38, I'm telling you what I have seen in the father's presence. He's referring to him as father again. And you are doing what you have heard from your father. Jesus said, I'm speaking to you from what I've heard from my father. I am the offspring of of woman. I am the offspring of God. I'm doing what I've seen my father doing. Listen to what he says. And you're doing what you have heard from your father. Remember, the offspring of Satan and the offspring of God would be in constant conflict, warfare, and chaos. Listen to what he said. Listen to what they said. Abraham is our father. And Jesus said, no, 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 no. If you were Abraham's children, Jesus said, then you would do what Abraham did. As it is, you are looking for a way to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from my father God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the works of your own father. We are legitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. And Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me for I have come here from God. I have not come on my own. God sent me. Why is my language? Why is my word? Why is my spermata? Why is my seed not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say, you belong to your father, the devil. The offspring of Lucifer in the garden, the offspring of the snake that would be in enmity, in warfare, in tension, in chaos, and try to kill the seed of God. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer, not holding to the truth, truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, his native seed, his native word, his native spermata. He is, look, look here, you say, well, Satan, Lucifer, is the father of what? Jesus says it right here clearly in verse 44. He is the father of liars. He is the father of lies. I got to hurry. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Good news. Great news. Remember, he's speaking to the snake in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, when he says, I'm going to put enmity and we're going to crush you with our heel. Jesus did it ultimately, but listen to what he says to you and I and to the spawn and the children of Satan. He says this to, our, to his children about how we are to respond to the lies and the liars and the, the voices we hear in our head. Luke 10, 19, I have given you authority. Who? Disciples, followers, walkers in the truth, seekers of the truth, children of the living God, those who have room for the word of God inside of them. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy and nothing by any means shall harm you. Proverbs chapter 18, 21, listen to me. Now you have the power and the authority to speak life and death. You can speak the words of your father, Lucifer, or you can speak the words of your father, God. It's not just what you hear that matters. It's what you say. Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Why? Because our language, our word is our seed. The offspring of our mouth We are created in the image of likeness of God that said, when he says, let there be, there is. I have given you the authority and the power to trample on snakes and scorpions and all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. Don't just be careful about what you hear. Be careful about what you say. Be careful about what you type. Be careful about what you post. 
man. In, 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 in the garden, when Adam and Eve partook of the knowledge, the resources of, when they partook of the word of good and evil, for the very first time they began to hear and speak from the father of lies. And initially all I could hear was God. But the moment they took the fruit, the seed, the word, the spermatozoa of Lucifer, the offspring, became alive in them. And they began to believe the lies. Not only did they begin to believe the lies, they began to speak the lies. God said, who told you you weren't enough? Who told you you were unworthy? Who told you that I didn't love you? Who told you that I don't have a plan for you? Who told you that you will always be lonely? Who told you that you will always be anxious? Who told you that you'll always be sick? Who told you that you were afraid? Who told you that you were naked? God, when we heard your word, when we heard your voice, we ran and we hid because we were naked, unworthy, lonely, isolated, sick, tired, afraid, anxious. How did you know? Who told you that? Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, under the law. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone listening, every person watching. I pray that we would extract every morsel that we're ready to hear right now through your apocalyptus, your revelation to us uh, concerning where we are. And then over time, you'll begin to tell us more as we're ready, as your seed is ready. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray with everyone listening and everyone watching that we would uh, take the power of the name of Jesus Christ and rebuke the seeds we've planted in our past because you said you've given us power to trample on the serpents and the scorpions and no power of the enemy. I pray right now that we would just absolutely saturate our seeds of Lucifer and the words we've spoken, the lies we've heard and the lies we've told with a supernatural roundup herbicide that would destroy that seed so that it would not be fruitful in our lives and that we would be able to see and we'd be able to know, we'd be able to hear and we'd be able to speak the truth that sets ourselves and others free in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. I gotta go. Hit the hearts, hit the lights, go crazy on those. Hashtag live, hashtag record, hashtag shared. I hope you're enjoying this Christmas uh, series that we're doing right now. And you're like, how's this Christmas? It's absolutely Christmas. It is the gift of God. So bye, everybody.